I'm standing here on the roof of Shiloh Temple in North Minneapolis, surrounded by solar panels. We're just about two miles from downtown. It's a beautiful sunny spring day, and the solar panels on this roof here are enough to power about 50 to 60 energy efficient homes. It's a different kind of solar array than we normally have in the sense that it doesn't just serve the building below, but it also serves over 20 households who have subscribed as members of this community solar array. I'm John Farrell. I'm the director of the Energy Democracy Initiative at the Institute for Local Self-Reliance. With me is Timothy Dunherter thomas He's the general manager of Cooperative Energy Futures, which is the developer of this project. We interviewed him over two years ago for our Local Energy Rules podcast when this project was just getting started. I'd like you to just describe for a little bit how this project differs from most community solar projects in terms of its size, its location, but also the level of ownership of its participants. Sure. Uh, so about 90% of community solar here in Minnesota is serving commercial and industrial customers, so it's not serving residents at all. Uh, of the remaining 10% that is serving residential customers, uh, basically all of the other developers that are out there are using a minimum credit score, usually either 680 or 700, uh, as the minimum for who can participate. Uh, that essentially means that uh, most low-income families, uh, as well as statistically uh, most people of color, uh, are excluded from participating in community solar. This community solar garden, as well as the other community solar gardens that uh, we develop as Cooperative Energy Futures, um, are different because we don't use a minimum credit score. Um, that means that everyone can actually participate. We're really developing community solar uh, here at Shiloh Temple and the other gardens that we develop uh, as a way to create a, a clean energy asset here in the community uh, that's benefiting the people that use it. Timothy, I know one other thing that you've done with this project that's relatively unique is around training and hiring, so that you had a commitment when we talked previously to train and hire folks in the local community to do this installation. Can you tell me a little bit about, more about why that was important to you in developing this project and then how that turned out? Yeah, um, we've seen a, a really big expansion of the solar industry, but um, so far most of those jobs um, have not been benefiting people of color and low-income people. Uh, we see a lot of racial disparities in the workforce around solar, and that's a huge piece of what we want to address uh, as we develop these these community solar gardens with a justice lens. Uh, and so we required our insulation contractor to use at least 50% minority labor. Um, and actually, the installer that we've used, Innovative Power Systems, has, has used a crew that's actually closer to 90% minority labor, uh, including a number of folks from here in North Minneapolis. Uh, we have also partnered uh, with a training program to help uh, build people's skills in the solar industry so that more people are qualified for those jobs as we create demand for the hiring. So, Timothy, I imagine you can look around this uh, installation up here with a little bit of pride since it's been a long time in development. I hear that the switch might get flipped next, as early as next week and the power uh, from these solar panels will start flowing both to the temple beneath us as well as to the different customers what else does Cooperative Energy Futures have in the pipeline? Sure. So uh, this is our first project, and it has been about three years uh, of work to get here. So we are very, very glad to be at the at the point of operation. Um, but this is uh, really just kind of the, the first step in a series of eight projects um, that we have coming. Uh, the second uh, will be starting construction very soon um, on the Edina Public Works building in Edina. Uh, we also have another installation at a church uh, down in Eden Prairie. Um, four ground mounts in greater Minnesota, including up by St. Cloud and three in southern Minnesota. Uh, and then our final project, um, which is a very exciting project, is just about two miles from here, um, which is uh, Canopy over Ramp A in uh, downtown Minneapolis. And altogether, that's about 6.7 megawatts of solar. So this project is 200 kilowatts. Uh, that's roughly 35 times that amount. Uh, and we'll be providing power uh, for about 700 households across the state. I have to say on a personal note, I'm very excited about the Ramp A project as a potential subscriber, but also just for its visibility in the sense that it's uh, the parking ramp right next to the Twin Stadium. So I'm hoping that it will also be a way to help feature solar for folks who might not have been aware of it. Cooperative Energy Futures is the only cooperatively owned community solar developer in Minnesota, the nation's leading community solar market. The Shiloh Temple Community Solar Project went live in May 2018 and the Ramp A project will be under construction later in 2018. Both projects provide powerful reminders of how the right policy enables energy customers to choose how they spend their energy dollars.